There's a risk on environment in the markets that's driving Bitcoin, right? So we've seen NVIDIA, SMCI, the stock market making new all-time highs. In fact, the NASDAQ's been really running but we've seen a lot of the other sectors in the S&P lagging technology. So there's this risk on environment getting into the highest risk type plays. That's been driving the stock market and Bitcoin with money flow. There's been excitement about the spot ETF and these inflows and getting everyone involved. The talk has been kind of contributing to this GameStop AMC type run in this asset. And then you have gold on the other side where you basically have had the central banks loading the boat for a long period of time, which is why gold hasn't pulled back from the all-time highs very far. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to BitcoinZella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. BitcoinZella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with BitcoinZella. Subscribe now. In this video, Gareth will share his insights on what's driving Bitcoin in the latest rally, why is the tech sector outpacing the S&P, how are spot ETF changing the game for investors, why is gold maintaining its value despite market fluctuations? Let's join Gareth in this interview about these topics and more. So, so just purely based on the charts, if we get a significant pullback here in Bitcoin, the 49 to 50,000 level is now major support. So again, let that would be just your run of your mil, of the mill correction. Um, and the reason that's significant is because that was the previous spot ETF high. So we ran up to 49, we pulled back, like you said, to the high 30s, and then we went up and broke out. So resistance, once we broke above 49, resistance becomes technical support. So on the way down now, 49 to 50 becomes huge support. Now, I will say this, if the stock market begins to crumble, let's say all of a sudden it becomes a risk off environment then we most likely will go down to that 30 to 32,000 level. If you look at a normal market situation, when you have the VIX as low as it is, stock market is at all-time highs, Bitcoin's at all-time highs, gold should be down 10, 15, 20% from its all-time highs. And instead, it was down 1% to 2% over the last couple of weeks until it got this one little push. And I'm convinced that smart money is at a point here where they're starting to say, this is a bubble in these risk assets. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're rotating in. You got the breakout. You got the momentum kicking in now on gold. And that's, again, explaining why both assets have pushed to new all-time highs. But I do think, and I'll say this here, is that Bitcoin is at risk if the stock market sells off. And this is when one of my theses for a long time. If the stock market sells off dramatically, Bitcoin comes in dramatic as well. In a significant development, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, has amended its prospectus for the BlackRock Global Allocation Fund to potentially include investments in Bitcoin exchange-traded products, ETPs. This move, filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, signals a new avenue for traditional investors to gain exposure to the digital asset market. The latest Bitcoin derivatives data indicates a continued climb in Bitcoin futures, open interest, hitting all-time peaks. Over the last day, Statistics reveal an open interest of $32.30 billion across 14 distinct Bitcoin futures markets. An Australian financial journalist stated Bitcoin is an insurrection, given the tightly controlled rules that control the conditions behind its operation. Kohler explained that while Bitcoin crashed tremendously in 2022, it constituted a subversion to the whole basis of free market financial capitalism due to its regulated supply and controlled issuance. Every, every money is valid. I don't want to discriminate here at all. But you have the institutions and the central banks that have been, and there's data on this, they have been buying gold hand over yeah. fist. And it always drives me nuts when people are like, oh, well, gold doesn't is not important anymore. Yet the central banks, the ones that print all of the money out there, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Japan, all of these players that have their finger on that printing press, they're the ones buying the most gold. That's really the smart money institutions like you know hedge funds not so much smart they're included with everyone else and they're running after bitcoin they're running after stocks they're paying ridiculous amounts for nvidia smci and that's the difference maker here but it didn't take much to push push gold over that that threshold right and now you have uh, in an asset that is so underinvested by retail 
that they're now having to play catch up. And this is just the start of gold and gold miners. What you saw was this culmination of greed, right? And again, people chasing a move that was already up. I mean, just looking at the last week, we're up from 50,000. We got that breakout above the spot ETF level of 49,000. And the momentum of that carried it up to this all-time high. But it's also known as a technical double top. And at double top, there's notoriously going to be players that are selling into that level or shorting it. And when you get to this point of euphoria, it gets every last buyer in so that when those sellers and shorters start pounding it down, there's no one left to buy. And that's where you get these dramatic drops. In addition, it's accelerated by the leverage in the in the crypto markets, right? I mean, in, in the stock market, you can play two to one. Two to one leverage is what an overnight investor can hold in a regular account. In crypto, it can be up to 100. It can be higher than that. And that creates these pockets where when flushes occur, you get these massive moves to the downside. And I would just like to say this is that if you want the mom and pops that are not in, the people that people hope start to buy into, the pension funds to buy into Bitcoin, you can't have intraday moves of 10 to 15 percent. They do not want to be involved in that. So this is this type of move is not healthy for crypto. Bitcoin whales are not in a rush to sell into the current rally that propelled Bitcoin to new heights above $70,000. The latest on-chain data suggests the number of unique addresses holding at least 1,000 Bitcoin, known as whales, has risen to 2,104. However, this is still lower than the record of 2,489 addresses reached in February 2021, when Bitcoin was trading above $46,000. The rising wallet count could also be attributed to the United States Spot Bitcoin Exchange Traded Funds, ETF, which surpassed $52.5 billion. The fact that whales are not selling their Bitcoin at these levels suggests that they expect prices to rise further. Bitcoin whales are important because the size of their trades can significantly impact price. First off, we have to be aware that the double top is the double top. So on a technical basis, until we really clear that, and a pierce intraday doesn't matter so much. So it's it's obviously we pierced it. It kind of stopped out a lot of people that probably had their stops right at 69,000, that former high. We pierced it, and then you saw the flush back down. Now, if we can establish ourselves over 69,000, I do think you have a shot at 100,000 here on Bitcoin. But again, it's a big if. It has to be if risk stays on the on on in play, essentially. Meaning that if we start see the, seeing the Fed not going to cut rates, if we start to see less liquidity in the system because they're doing away with some of these bank funding programs, that's going to hurt Bitcoin just like the stock market. I still see that correlation is pretty tight. And I think that's partially what we saw today is what we saw is the stock market coming down. There's still all this excitement over what we're hearing about all these inflows into these ETFs, record inflows. And it kind of creates this 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 angst to get in. People mm -hmm. have to rush in regardless of price, right? I mean, price could have been 100000 a million. People were still going to get that in. FOMO kicks that in, FOMO, Garrett. FOMO, that's what it is, right? And then what happened was they say, people started to realize also that the stock market was coming down and we saw this big reversal in Bitcoin. So I really do think it's still a risk asset. Now, over the next 10 to 20 years, I think it moves more towards the digital gold, which is actually a very healthy thing for it to do. It's just not there. And again, if you you know if you could line up a chart of NVIDIA over the last couple months with Bitcoin, they are almost identical. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.